and pneumonia is the most common cause of death for kids with SMA. Early morning, day five. After 15 hours of analysis, the results are ready. Okay, let's see how we did. In the moment of truth. Ah, we have bands. Oh, fantastic. We've got one embryo unaffected, and we've got one affected. Of those two, one of them, and from yesterday, that was the best looking one, um, would be predicted to be like mom and dad. Good news. We're ready to go. Okay. After a night at Jack's bedside, the good news is welcome. Anne has gone for implantation. All Al can do is wait. A lot of stress for us uh, last few days, obviously, with Jack being sick. <laughs> Um, but we made it here, and we've got a shot at this working this time, which we didn't think we really had, given what's been going on with the uh, doctors here at the hospital, um, looking at our eggs and embryos and all that. So uh, we're lucky. Dr. Hughes showed us a little film of the embryos and the pattern. It reminded me that Jack is part of this. He helped. He helped us, and he helped Dr. Hughes. He, he's here with us. He's a good boy. The sole viable embryo is passed from the laboratory through the hatch into the operating room to be placed in Anne's womb. Hey, Dr. Grodin. The Freedmans will not know the outcome for two weeks. Soon after the Freedman's procedure, Dr. Mark Hughes found himself facing the biggest crisis of his career. For almost two years, his research had been part of the Human Genome Project, coming under the National Institute of Health and federally funded. In 1995, Congress passed a bill banning the use of government funds in embryo research. There's a federal statute that basically withdraws any form of federal funding for research on embryos or embryo tissue. And it's subject to interpretation with regard to what's an embryo, what's a tissue, what is research, uh, which aspects of embryonic research violate the intent, the spirit of the statute. Uh, its, uh, it's message is clear. It was the product of a Congress uh, that fell under the influence of a strong right-to-life movement in the United States who saw embryo research as part of the abortion issue. And really, the statute is a message more about abortion, more about the right to life, than it is about scientific research or science or genetics or children. In October 1996, Mark Hughes' federal funding, a substantial portion of his operating budget, was cut off. This is not the first time that politics and the new science of genetics and reproduction have collided. Dr. Alan Trounson is a veteran of the controversy. He created the world's second test tube baby. In the early 80s, his embryo research in Australia led the world. In our case, it was the Roman Catholic Church and some feminist groups, uh, radical feminist groups, were able to engineer legislation through our local state government, which in fact prevented us from doing research on human embryos. Trounson's embryo research did not stop. It just moved elsewhere. Science is not local. It's not a local endeavor. It's an international. We travel with PhDs across international borders. We can actually work wherever we like. And as a consequence, the research goes on. Mark Hughes's work also went on, despite the funding cutbacks he would not withdraw the treatment from the families already under his care. In Denver, the Nashes learned that the Ethics Board had given permission for the treatment to go ahead. Okay, well, this is good. This, at least I know, at least I know something. Okay, and then 
I will call you on day three and come get my blood drawn. All right, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Mark Hughes has still not said that he knows how to do it. He'll figure it out, Lisa. And he says I can drink champagne on New Year's Eve. You don't need to drink champagne. Now Lisa must start IVF treatment. This has become quite a common technique for infertile couples over the last 20 years. It requires a heavy cocktail of hormones. He wants to take my eggs to the egg retrieval on the 6th of January. Prior to that, he would probably start me on the Pergonol the 27th of December. That's the stimulating drug. Then what he said was he'll put me on Lupron day 21 of my next cycle. So a month from now, he'll put me on the Lupron. I'll stay on that until they do the egg retrieval. But in addition to the Lupron, I'll be on the stimulation drugs. And I'll be on the stimulation drugs for eight days. Then I'll get HCG on the ninth day. They do their egg retrieval 35 hours later on the 11th day. These women are definitely at risk because of the manipulation of their hormones, because of the hyperstimulation, because of the extreme level of hyperstimulation. I wonder whether these women really are aware of the enormous risks they're putting themselves at and what are they doing for those children if it in fact turns out that they themselves are putting themselves in, in mortal danger. Uh, where are your shoes? Two months have passed. Dr. Mark Hughes has finally found the needle in a haystack, the damaged Fanconi gene. Tomorrow, Lisa Nash's five-day procedure begins. She has been on maximum hormone stimulation. Like if I go over a bump, you can feel your ovary kind of going like that. It's gross. But I can't, I can't button my jeans. I can't button my pants because my tummy's so puffy. And I won't put on my maternity clothes because I'm superstitious. I want to be sympathetic towards her, so I've gained some weight and a little excess bloating. And <laughs> my boobs hurt too, so that's all right. Well, that's good because mine don't. We're, we're going to make it through it. Yeah. Where's your shoe? Video hooked up to this. In the Denver University Hospital, Lisa's eggs are collected from her ovaries. Shake up the, shake up the second half a little bit in case they want to. Dr. Hurst said she had 21 follicles. And generally, he does fairly well. We generally get one egg per follicle. There's another egg. Lovely. Oh, they're just pretty. Now, I tell you, this took some doing. Come here. Sticky cells, sticky cells, sticky cells. Come here. Let go. 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 All right. All right. Our fertilization rates are much, much higher if we leave some cumulus. And he's got looks like he's got great sperm, so I'm not too worried about leaving a little extra cumulus on her eggs. I want to know how many eggs I got. Count so far, Barb? Uh, 14. 14. So 14 so far, and they'll be, they'll be counting for a little bit. So we'll That's roll weird. you down to the recovery room, and I'll let your husband know that you did great. You ready? 15? We'll keep yelling them out to you. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. 15, Lisa. 